this is like lore okay this is like my origin story okay <laughs> So at the end of my first video, my last video, I talked a little bit about the things that I wanted to knit uh, over the next few months. But the thing is, I posted that like mid-September because it took me forever to edit it, but I filmed it back in August and things have changed. Um, and since, since posting, I've like so many videos have come out like so many videos and I'm like re-inspired all over again um, and I kind of like have changed my mind on what I want to do. I will preface by saying that this is by no means an actual list of what I think I will be knitting or what like am capable of knitting in a season. It is purely my delusional wish list uh, of things that if I had the physical ability, time, as well as like resources um, I would love to have in my wardrobe like right now going into this upcoming season. To start us off, I'm going to be discussing all of the petite knit patterns that live in my mind rent-free. I think this season there are just a couple patterns that are really really grabbing my attention. So first of all is the Friday slipover, in particular like the v-neck version. This is a pattern I currently own, have made it before, um, and it like literally the the urge that comes every couple of months to like hey let me make another friday slipover um the first one i made was actually a gift knit for my father and there was like a whole a whole issue that like ruined ruined the final product which i will not get into that tirade right now but i need to redeem myself and i do need another friday slipover for myself i currently have in stash um, some drops lima in the color petrol mix that I would love to make um, the Friday slipper with slip over with I think it will be absolutely gorgeous my only fear is that I will be playing a little bit of yarn chicken so maybe I'll be down by like I'll be off by like a hundred grams no 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 that's a lot I think I'll be off by maybe like a hundred meters but the idea is is that I'm going to go up a needle size to 4.5 millimeters and that should solve any issues when it comes to um, the meterage that I have. Fingers crossed. It may not actually solve anything. Following that, I, and I'm so late to the bandwagon on this, but the Elizabeth blouse? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, my girl? That is so gorgeous. I think I like absolutely need that. I, and, I just imagine like tucking my hijab inside too so you can see the see the neckline. I think that was the thing that really stopped me for the last little bit in actually buying the pattern, making it, being interested in it is because my hijab usually covers like neckbands here. Um, so I thought what a waste, like it's just a sweater that's going to get covered and I'm just going to look weird and bulky, but I can just like tuck it in. I think it'll be fine. I don't think I'll look like a floating head. I think it'll be fine. Um, so that's on the list and then I think the last um, petite knit pattern that is just like grating my brain every single day is the Marseille sweater Marseille sweater I have three three balls of double Sunday in sailor in the dark and I just I like how am I gonna use those 300 grams oh no sorry not 300 grams 300 meters so like 150 grams three balls I could make a hat as a gift but who deserves that i don't wear hats so i like i can't wear it who am i gonna gift that to um first my second option with that yarn i could like buy a couple more balls and then make a um like a, a slip over like like this one that i'm wearing but option three is why don't i just like make the marseille it'll be so pretty i think the second i saw and this is like lore okay this is like my origin story okay that and the champagne cardigan i saw typical bliss um her her 2022 roundup video i saw those two sweaters and that is what got me into knitting garments like this sweater has such an importance in my like knitting journey but i have yet to make it 
I just didn't have the yarn for it. And then I bought the yarn for it. But then I didn't have the pattern because I'm like, oh, when am I going to, like, I have to, I have to earn the pattern. I can make this myself. I bought the pattern. Okay. Instead, I cast on it without the stripes to make a chestnut sweater. That, that was last year and I still haven't finished that chestnut sweater because it was way too big. All this tangent to say the Marseille sweater has to be made or it's just back in my head. Maybe it won't actually be made. Maybe I'm just like, you know, let it go, let it go daydream, right? Maybe it's just whatever. Um, but that, that, that trio, that trifecta, ma, 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 so good. That's kind of it when it comes to the petite knit patterns. Next on the list, Ozetta. Okay, recently I've been knitting the Field Day Cardigan by Ozetta and it's been literally so much fun. I'm using, um, I'm using like the best yarn for it ever. So fun. It, but the pattern is so good and that has gotten me so excited about Ozetta as a designer and a, a pattern writer. I, I've been eyeing her legs pullover for a while. I actually recently purchased it as well. And just envision this, okay? The legs pullover in a deep maroon and i have to give all credit to yasmin of cozy trico for this she is using gilead by derura natura in i believe it's the colorway merlot and it is just so delicious so gorgeous and imagine that that gilead 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 as the lakes pull over like please like i can't say no i can't say no but i have to i have to i have to say no um because i'm on a yarn ban but you don't have to say no um jokes aside i think i'll make two of these um i will definitely be purchasing the gilead after i actually like touch it and feel it and everything um just to like confirm that it's what i want but I intend on purchasing that later down the road after this yarn ban is over and after I have saved up a little bit of yarn money. But um, if I'm knitting from stash, the plan is I have some Rico Make It Tweed uh, and just some really, just a really basic beige wool from Patton's and pairing those together, my mind, basically to dupe Madara. Uh, it's not the same. I've tried to do Madara, like sake, many, many times and failed many, many times. But it, it, it's not a dupe, but it'll be her own thing. It'll be beautiful. That's, that's the, that's the hope. That's the dream. I've also recently, I, this, ugh, the next pattern, literally the second I saw it, I'm like, I have to test this. I have to sign up to test it, this. Um, and then I, I literally have to physically hold myself back from applying because I just, I knew... I just, I just knew I couldn't do it just with everything that was going on. I, I just knew it would be irresponsible to sign up for that test knit, but Friday Knits, um, she's knitting or she's testing currently. I believe it's called the Wrap It Up Dress. I just know it as the dress, okay? The dress that I'm in love with. I don't remember the name, but I'm in love with her, okay? Like, not, not Friday Knits, but the dress. But oh my god literally the second i saw it all i can th think thought of oh my god all i thought of when i saw that dress is black wool black mohair it's a bulky weight size up and that's a that's a fall jacket and maybe like finesse a little bit like change up a little bit of like the actual wrap um like the wrap ties and kind of like how it wraps over but like, she literally designed a winter jacket, or like not a winter, like a fall jacket. That, and I just I can't get that out of my head. Like I, I, the second that comes out, I'm buying it. I don't know when I'm gonna make it, but it's gonna happen maybe for next year. And I will cry until until that point. I would love to actually now cast her on immediately. Like I would love to be knitting on that right now. But I can't because it's in testing. <laughs> but I will wait. I will wait patiently. I will wait patiently. I'll be good. But the second, the second she releases that, I'm on it. Okay, I'm on it, and you should be on it too. Kind of um, in that same kind of family 
I am also so highly anticipating um, the next couple typical bliss patterns that are that are currently in the works. Um, she's in the process, I believe, of writing the the vest pattern. Um, it's it's called the typical vest. I don't have a photo of it, but we'll see. It's essentially a V-neck vest that has like it's buttoned up, um, so it's kind of like you know you pull it on, pull it off. Um, and it's so pretty and this is another thing that I'm thinking of pairing um, some Rico make it tweed with and I think that'll be like absolutely gorgeous like maybe a black maybe a gray maybe maybe like a dark brown so we have options but I think that is the plan I also like she also has a cardigan um, she's I think she calls it the typical Nora cardigan she, it's like she's currently knitting it and I have that exact same yarn and I am in the biggest conundrum of life of do I use that yarn for the pattern I'm going to talk about in a second or or for that cardigan when it comes out and I just I don't know what to do either way I will be knitting that cardigan I just don't know what with what yarn maybe I'll just knit it with some other Nora that I have then I would have to buy some mohair more mohair and I I don't know I don't know we are we're confused we don't know what we want to do we don't know what we want at all but we just know that we love it okay we just know that we need it um i think i'll definitely have to knit uh, have to be responsible every time i think of buying yarn i just think of brie and how i can't let her down but that typical cardigan i think i already i like i think it would be gorgeous like as just a black cardigan and I'm in need of a black cardigan. I think it's it's I think on six millimeter needles, so it's super oversized. I don't know actually if it's oversized, but it's like super chunky. Oh my gosh, it's not it's not super anything. Okay, it's just super gorgeous. Like it's like it's nice that it's big enough that it would be a pretty fast knit. It'd be thick enough that it would be like warm, but not so thick that it's like okay, like I can't wear a jacket on top of it or that it's like burdensome. So. I just I think it's gonna be such a great versatile piece um, and I'm even thinking maybe now like I'm thinking about it is totally I think that'd be amazing oh my god I just had a greatest idea I could use some Briggs and Little for that and it'd be like not quite out like outerwear too oh my god are all the cards do I just want to make I uh, I could I could knit like the largest largest size and then maybe even felt it down to be like outerwear with the with the Briggs and Little can I do tell me okay please in the comments right now tell me is that a good idea or am I being dumb like please tell me like is that is that possible like will that be good like how do you felt let me know please please Tell me what you think. I, I need I need someone to validate this train of thought for me or tell me I'm wrong so I don't like make a huge mistake. Kind of diving back in. I would love if you would let me know. So do you personally mo knit more like basic stockinette minimalist pieces or do you gravitate more towards like cabling and color work and things like that? Because, and this is an important question, please let me know. And if you... If you're um, of the latter, let me know, please, like in the comments, who are your favorite designers and do you have any recommendations for patterns? Because I have, I've always, like I got into knitting because I'm like, oh, I could make something that I could buy for significantly more. And I think at one point it got to the point where I would just, I wanted to just create my basics or uh, like a capsule wardrobe of completely knitted items and then the plan was I would learn to sew after that but I've recently been so enamored with with like cables and lace and color work and I, I never have been before I don't know what it is I don't know is it that summer's ending and the fall season is coming and fall is just like cable heavy or is it just that my tastes have changed or am I just like like infatuated like, am I actually into this? I think I am. But I keep seeing, like, 
all these gorgeous like really really complicated patterns that are like blowing my mind and i just i want them all i'm going to discuss a few that are on my list and scream fall to me whether i make them like i'm not gonna make all of them now. like ain't no way like it's just like the physical inability to do it takes me two months to knit a sweater there's no way but i do want to put in time to making at least a couple of these um over the next little bit I kind of also have them as my north star knits like what am i working towards eventually but enough preamble let's just get into the patterns okay i will start off with what is quite possibly the most popular pattern on Ravelry, the ranunculus. I bet that's the first time you've heard somebody talk about the ranunculus sweater. I, I, I don't know what it is. And I actually mentioned this in my, in my first podcast episode, which I will, I think it's, I think I'll like link it in the cards above, I guess, um, if you want to go watch it. But I did talk about the ranunculus and that was one on my on my list and i think that is still one that i will definitely do because it will be a lot quicker and that lace so pretty it's like such a good introduction and because it's on bigger needles like i anticipate i could do it pretty quickly too so it'll be like very motivating to do and it's just recently i've just been finding it so beautiful like i just look at so many like i've just been on the ravelry pages or like in youtubing and i'm like why, why are you so pretty like why didn't i see it before what clicked in my head that like i didn't see it before and now i look at it and i'm like oh my god I'm the most beautiful beautiful girl ever um i don't know but i feel like that is been like the mental shift i've had recently i feel like i have a hypothesis that <laughs> this is such a dumb again i talk about it in my last episode so sorry for the redundancy but i talk uh, I have this hypothesis that like so many people got back into knitting during the pandemic and because so many people and of course you can like be very very experienced after like six months because you just push yourself. I think a lot of us have been learning at a relatively similar pace and started with stockinette pieces and now a couple like couple years down the road um, and are excited to learn new things, learn complicated things, are more confident as knitters. So, so I, I think I have like, as High Fiber Knit says, proof of concept of that, but uh, I'd love to know, is that the case for you? And if it is like, oh my God, like we all, are we all, like I have no unique experience in my life. From here, I wanna talk about the Cable Queen herself, Sari Nordland. I, Again, I remember watching a um, High Fiber Knits podcast episode and she was talking about like test knitting. Like this is back in the day, test knitting for Sari Norlin. I remember seeing that and I was like, could never be me. Like I, A, could never knit that. B, like that's not my style. Fast forward a couple of years and guess who's been stalking Sari Norlin's Ravelry page and Instagram. She has so many beautiful designs. She has some really pretty shawl patterns too that I'm like, Kind of, eyeing. I think the number one thing that has been calling me is her Rococo pullover. It is like the most intricate cabling I've ever seen. And maybe it's not that hard. Maybe I'm just like, I don't know and I don't understand it, but I find it to be so gorgeous and it looks so complicated. And I know it'd be like pretty difficult, but so worthwhile i'm like i'm over beige i i don't know what color i would do also also obsessed with the qatar very similar kind of concept where it's like um a a lace lace slash cable i don't know may, I don't, maybe is the rococo lace or cable i don't know maybe i was wrong this entire time but it's like a very textured yoke um, and then the and like the arms and the rest of the body are stockinette. So it's it's like a really good entryway into doing more textured knits. So like you're not like you're not st you you could still be stuck, but you're getting through the hardest part when you're like mentally most engaged and excited about the project. And then also like if you mess up, like it's genius because wait I think it's wait actually. Actually, is this knit top down or bottom up? Okay, phew, they're knit top down. But I was gonna say like it's perfect because if you make a mistake in the yoke, 
or like it just doesn't fit or something's wrong like you can you're not gonna get rid of like an entire body is worth of work it's so pretty and i like i wish i could pull off beige I, beige is not my color like green oh this is not green this is black green is my color i literally look like a bowl of oatmeal when i wear beige um because it's like very similar to my skin tone so it's just like I don't know. I also really love her, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, but the Laolu shawl. Like, uh, oh my god, it's just so pretty. And I think it would be, oh my god, I'm just like looking at it. She's so gorgeous. <sighs> it reminds me a little bit about one of one of the scarves in, I think it's called um, the Deer Scarf from the 52 Weeks of Shawl, 52 Weeks of Shawls. But it's, I think this one is, uh, this is a DK, it's not a fingering, and it's like physically smaller, so it's not as daunting as the deer scarf. Kind of continuing the trend of, um, <laughs> you know, in, I don't know if you listen to K-pop, but um, in, it's like, I was just thinking, okay, so in K-pop when they have like their dances, there's usually like a point part in their dance, so it's like, oh, like this is the like i'm looking for attention whatever right like you it's your a very it's a it's just a it's just a, the the part you know the part that everyone knows and loves um so it's like the point p point part of the choreography <laughs> um also to say also to say that um i was just thinking about that concept i'm like oh like for for garments like you know your point um your point texture versus like a full full on texture so sorry Nordland I think is like does that a lot with those textured yolks um and stockinette bodies and that is that's been my bread and butter recently in terms of like what I'm very much gravitating towards so a couple more in the same kind of world um the field cardigan and field sweater uh, I forget the designer's name but I think it's so popular like it this sweater has been on the cover, like on the front page of Ravelry for the past like several weeks. So I'm sure everyone knows this sweater. I didn't love it in the color work version, but I loved, loved seeing it in a brown. And I like had, can you tell that I'm like feeling the fall vibes? Because every single thing I'm like, I want to make in a dark maroon. But I think the Knitting for Olive heavy merino in Bordeaux would be delicious in that i think i would more likely make the cardigan to the pullover um i like the that i can you know open and close like isn't that wouldn't that be gorgeous and it would basically look like like it's such a testament to fall because the design it'll, it'll just look like leaves like literally like foliage so pretty i've also really been eyeing the moorland cardigan as well as the shawl but i find this absolutely beautiful and I first saw it um, because Ray Nets on Ravelry, Instagram, and YouTube, she test knitted this. And I remember her posting about it on Instagram before. I'm like, oh yeah, that's so gorgeous. And I will say, Ray Nets has been like such a huge, huge like inspiration to me recently. I like literally like deep dive into her Ravelry and look at every single thing that she's made. And like, she, I prolific test knitter. Like her taste, her execution, her color choices, um, so much fun. And I, I saw a story by Stitch by Shreya, and she, um, her and her and Sharon are they're like they're like good uh, good friends. So they I guess they would like go out and stuff like that, whatever. So she had she like posted a photo of Sharon on her story, and she was wearing this like beautiful slipover like instantly i'm like i have no shame i'm like hey sorry to be that girl but what does that pattern tell me i need to know it now <laughs> and shreya just so sweet um she she like told me what it was and she showed me like she sent me a photo of what she was wearing too which is like the uh sweater version of the same slipover and i'm just going going all all in with the preamble but the the piece i'm talking about is the seasons change to um ta uh sorry seasons change to slipover as well as um sweater and i i think oh, i want them both but i think i'm more likely to make the vest 
first because a that's what i fell in love with at first and b it's less knitting and less yarn i'm subscribed to amy Scher's um newsletter so i am like waiting waiting for her to release the news that it's available and i'm just gonna like immediately immediately in my car i don't usually i don't do that i'm very very like methodical about the patterns I buy because there's just always something new and shiny and gorgeous so I really have to think about it um I really have to think about a pattern like think about it before I buy a pattern and I like let it ruminate but this pattern and the wrap it up dress immediately I'm immediately snatching those up because I I've been thinking about them okay <laughs> in my last video I talked about the birch pullover I'm still in love with that pattern. I do own that pattern, but I just, I think that might be a little bit too big of a beast right now for what I actually want to knit. Like, realistically, I know that that is gonna take me like months and months and months to knit. So like, why am I going to, I would rather start that in this, cause I'm not a, I'm not a, oh my God, I'm going all over the place. I'm not a huge summer knitter. Um, I will knit a few pieces, but I, also use it as like <laughs> prep time to like prepare for fall while everyone's doing their summer knits so I'll be ahead but I like um like next summer to work on the birch pullover because I just I want something that has uh more like not instant gratification but less delayed of a gratification I want something that is not going to take me eight months to make so we are we we still love her we still want it we will still make it just not now um, and not this season, but The Birch Pullover by Andrea Mary. Didn't even tell you which one it is, by Andrea Mar Mary. Literally so beautiful. I think, so Emily of Gently Chaos Knits knit hers in like this gorgeous yellow, which I, again, I cannot pull off yellow. I'm a cool tones girly, but such a pretty, like, it looked amazing on her. So good. And then I saw um, Airy Knits make one in like a hand dyed grayish color. Again, gorgeous. And then I just couldn't get it out of my head after that. Um, and it looks like I won't be able to get it out of my head for a while because it's gonna be some time before I knit her, but it's gonna happen. So the thing about cables is I have cabled before. Um, like I learned to cable probably like the first three or four months that I, I've been knitting. I like knit cables like um, gloves and things like that, but I've never created like a full. Oh, and I've knit like cable blanket. I've knit cabled blankets, okay? Like, I I can do hard things. <laughs> Reminder to myself, I can do hard things. But I've knit cabled blankets before, but never, like, um, a cabled garment. But I'm familiar with cables. I, like, I'm not stressed out about cables. Like, I'm stressed about, like, how I'm gonna feel doing cables. But I, I like, I know I can figure out, figure it out. I just don't know if I want to sit and do it, right? But I think the big beast my north star knit is the winter wood sweater by uh, the petite knitter and like just give it a second this is literally literally looks like magic i i still cannot fathom how do you create that how does that happen right like i i've never done color work never tried color work i I was gonna say I've never purchased a color work pattern. I purchased one color work pattern. So I just figured, okay, maybe I'll never do color work, but, and maybe I'll never learn how to make this winter wood sweater. But I, like day by day, I'm priming my mind that like, I will do this. It won't be this year, definitely not. It, it probably won't be next year. Who knows when it will be, but I bought the pattern. <laughs> That's how in love with this I am. I bought this pattern months ago um, because I know this is gonna be something I do one day. I don't know when, but it's not a definitely not something that I can make for myself um, at this point in time at this current skin level. Maybe never. Um, I want hand holding, and it's just I want to support like this artist. I just want to support the artistry of this sweater. Like so beautiful. I've seen a lot of colorwork sweaters, uh, and this by far this and the next one I'm talking about are probably like the most beautiful, like just most beautiful ones I've ever seen. Perfect segue into the final sweater, which I think is going to be something I actually attempt this year. Maybe, it, and if not this year, like early next year. It's the porcelain sweater by Lynette. Biggest conundrum of 
what color I want to do this in because I thought, hey, you know what? I Miso Miso makes. Uh, so my friend Michelle um, on Instagram, Miso makes. She is making literally. She <laughs> she is the reason. Okay, her and Ivy Lulu, Ivy Lulu Donuts actually. Um, they are the ones who have inspired me to make the porcelain sweater. A Ivy, uh, her name's Megan. It's not Ivy. She always makes just like the most iconic knits, and she made hers in like a green like main color and then I think it was like white I think it was white for the color work but so gorgeous and then Michelle made hers in like a cream white with like the most pale blue beautiful like light color so it's like low contrast and there's something about that that just like is so delicate and like so dainty and gorgeous that I, I just, I was sitting, I was sitting in like, you know, when you're stuck between a rock and a hard spot, but it, you, I'm there except it's not a rock or a hard spot. It's literally like, like, do I want bubble tea or do I want Starbucks? Like, which one? I think I set, I've like settled on kind of like a combination of both in the sense that I'm going to use blue, a blue color um, inspired by Michelle. Um, but I'm going to do the main color as like a, the deeper, darker color inspired by Megan. So and <laughs> shout out to my girl, Megan. She like coached me through this and helped me so much to like figure out the color combination that I'm going to go for because I was in a conundrum. Like I was, I was on typical bliss, bliss. Oh my God. I was on typical bliss stream being like, please help me. I'm crying. I need help. I'm overwhelmed. Okay. And Megan immediately messaged me and she's like, Hey, I got you. Um, and together we decided I'm going to make the base in, um, so I, I already knew that I wanted to try pure gint, um, and that would be the color, like, those would be the yarns I would use, but we decided, um, I want to get the new petite knit, um, colorway, and I think it's called Night Sky, I don't know the code, can't find it anywhere. That's like conundrum too, like, where do I get it? Like, now that I know what I want, where do I get it? We're gonna do that, and then like a white the color work will be white and I think I think that will be everything I want so thank you so so much for listening to me ramble on and on um I don't know if this was like an actual fall knitting plan or more so just like me daydreaming in front of the camera of everything I want and need um at this exact point in time but thank you so much for joining and um, listening to the inner workings of my mind. Uh, I also wanted to like, not to be sappy or like lame, but I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who took the time to watch uh, my, my first podcast episode. It was like very much, it was like an incredibly vulnerable thing to do. If you took the time to watch or if you took the time to like leave a comment or subscribe or like like it, I'm just so, so thankful for that. It so yeah, until next time. The sun is starting to set. Um, I procrastinated a little bit on filming this and now we are, this is where we're at. Oh my god, it's getting so dark. Oh my god. Okay, I'm just gonna like speed, speed, speed. Oh my god, I have an idea. I think the lighting looks pretty okay. I think I'm a little bit washed out, but that's okay. 